Welcome back, everybody. This is episode 10 of the Next Generation of Superstars. We're very grateful to have Devante Stevens. He's defensive back at Weber International University. Welcome to the show, Devante. Thanks for having me, man. Awesome. Awesome. So a quick intro on you. I know you were born in North Carolina and you play defensive back for Weber. Um, I know you have some, somewhat of a background also in IT and experience in that. You love helping your community. And I know that you also served six years in the army and one tour in Afghanistan, um, which is incredible. Do you want to kind of give our audience a little bit more um, about an intro of yourself and kind of your, your story, um, if you don't mind sharing? Um, well, my name is Devontae Stevens. Um, I'm from North Carolina originally. And uh, yeah, I was in the Army as well. But one of the main things that, you know, um, stuck with me while growing up is like football. And that's how I really got into football. Like, you know, um, I was, I wouldn't say like I was emotionally like damaged as a child or anything like that. But like, you know, the, my childhood and upbringing kind of was not the best, you know? So for me, football was kind of like that getaway to express myself and have a sense of purpose, like within actually doing something. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and what about the influence from your family and friends growing up uh, with football? You know, how was, was there a positive influence there? I mean, I feel like it was more so of me just watching football, like, my uncles and, and stuff like that play football, but it wasn't like I was like inspired by a certain player or anything like that. Most of my, like my coaches and, and stuff like that was kind of like my motivation, like going into playing football and stuff because they played a fatherly role in my life. So, yeah. That's, that's incredible. Was there any specific really, coach in particular, um, you know, whether it was like your high school coach or even your coach now, is there anyone in particular that, you know, has really um, had a great impact on your life? Um, you're speaking as if like, I know him now. I don't know him now currently, but I would say it was one of my youth coaches when I, when I lived in um, Tampa, Florida, when I played there, my one of uh, my youth coach, he would always like, come get me for practice. And I stayed alone, like I stayed far away from where we practiced at. He would always come get me for practice, just kind of like taking me to practice every day, just telling me, you know, you could go big with this, you can do big things with this. And I never really believed it, but he did. So when it got into, like, when I got into high school, that's another coach that really like inspired me because he would tell me the same thing. And he was telling me like, you know, I could go and play in college and I could go play in the NFL, but at, at that age, I wouldn't say you fully believe it, but you kind of understand where you're going, but you don't really know. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like in high school, that's where I really, that's that's the coach that really motivated me. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. And to be able to have that you know, mentor in your life is, is incredible, especially at such a young age. Uh, is there any football idol that you looked up to as you started to kind of immerse yourself more into the sport? Is there anyone that you really wanted to model your game after or, or you know, that, that really helped pave your, your path so far? Um, so I could say someone, but I would always relate it to like, to like size. So I liked Cam Chancellor actually growing up because, you know, he's a hard hitter. I like hitting hard, you know, I can cover well, but I like hitting. That's, that's, that's obviously what I like doing. So right. It would say, I would say, I would say Cam Chancellor or Jamal Adams, somewhere like that. Um, or uh, Grant Delpit, he played at LSU. I like, I like him as well. But those are, those are kind of like the, the kind of people I would model my game after. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, has there been any memorable moment or experience that you've had so far in your career that you look back on and it's kind of like a wow moment for you? <clears throat> Um, I would say the last game of this season, I almost caught a, um, almost caught an interception. <laughs> I feel like that's, it's not really any wild moments yet because this was kind of like my first season in college. So it, it's not really like many like crazy wild moments, but it's, I'm just thankful to be playing because playing, like being in the army, I thought I was going to be in the army forever. 
I'm really just thankful to be playing the sport. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's awesome. And, and kind of talk a little bit more, if, if you don't mind sharing, um, what was your experience like serving in the army? Um, and, and now, you know, coming back and, and looking back on that experience that you had um, and, and to be grateful for, for being able to serve in the army. Honestly, I never thought I would join the army. Like coming out of high school, I thought, you know, it was either football or something else. So I graduated high school with a low GPA. So my coaches was telling me like, you know, you can either go JUCO or you can go to the military. And I didn't, I really didn't at the time, I probably should have went JUCO, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just take a chance on myself and I'm gonna do four years in the army and go play football. I ended up doing six and, you know, now I'm where I'm at now, but like my experience in the army, I would say it was good, like very good. I experienced a lot of different things. Like I went, going overseas was something I never thought I'd do. Like from the small area that I'm from, most people don't get to travel like I, I've traveled in the, in the military and stuff like that. So I'm really grateful and honored to serve in the military, but I never thought I was gonna go to the army. I would, I would make that clear, but it was a great experience overall. Right, yeah, and then be able, you were going into it, you know, wanting to only maybe serve four years and you served six years as well as in two, one tour in Afghanistan. Um, what was that like, you know, kind of extending it even further, but also having that tour in Afghanistan? What was that like? Um, it wasn't, it wasn't like I thought it would be. Like I thought it would be, because um, joining the army, you think about like Call of Duty, you know, stuff like that. But at the same time, it's just like, it's like once you join and then you go overseas, you start to look at life more differently. I, I don't really know. Like you start to enjoy life more because it was times where, you know, I could have lost my life. Like I, I, it was it was plenty of times where I could have lost my life. But once you come back to like the United States and stuff like that, you start to cherish life more because you know any uh, any day you can you can go and that tour in Afghanistan really like that really taught me that because like some people you know they take life for granted and they don't you know live and stuff like that but at the same time when you when you go through something like you go through at a, like in a tour in Afghanistan you start to realize like you know I want to live I want to live life one day at a time you don't really want to go through you know trials and tribulations and stuff like that but at the same time you want to live so I would say the tour in Afghanistan was very like intense but I liked it yeah it was good that's incredible and you know kind of going off that Devante what, <laughs> what lessons can you take away or look back that you, you've learned and those skills that you can apply to just being a student athlete, right? And, and being, um, you know, playing the sport of football, uh, have there been any lessons or skills that you've taken away that's helped you to this day? I would say um, leadership skills because in the military, uh, I was a NCO, which is a non-commissioned officer, which is kind of like, if, if you're at a regular job, it's kind of like a supervisor. So I had like soldiers under me. Um, I would have to tell them what to do. I would have to, you know, like discipline them, stuff like that. And it's kind of like you're their parent. At, at times, it's kind of like you're their parent because you have to do so much for them. But I would say, I would say being in, being in positions like that, you start to understand like, um, and I, I did, a, I did, I did IT as well, but it's just, it's just the fact that being in a leadership position, most people don't know how to do that. They can't really you know, control the situation and know how to read the room and stuff like that. I feel like most of those things translate to the field because at safety, where I play it, you have to have, you have to be kind of like a field general. Right. It makes Honestly, sense. You have to relate a message to the cornerbacks, relate a message to the linebackers, to the D-line, everything like that. You have to be kind of like a field general. So I feel like leadership is really what I took from the, the military and that's that's a skill that I've really learned that's awesome and that's going to help you you know down the road even after your career uh, wh what about your teammates how is your I know it's only been one year that you've played at, at Weber so far 
How, how have you bonded so far with your teammates? Um, do you guys have a pretty good relationship overall and, um, and kind of a good, uh, you know, core and foundation and structure? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like we're, honestly, we're turning the program around. So when I came here, um, this is kind of like a, a building school, a building area. So when I came here, um, they were two and eight. We finished the year, I think six and four. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, we finished the year six and four. So it's a building school. I feel like the foundation really comes from the players and, and the coaches. So <clears throat> looking at it from my standpoint, the my teammates are, are great, honestly. I couldn't ask for better. That's awesome. And then congrats to be able to turn that around, um, you know, seeing the program at two and eight and now six and four. Um, definitely great improvement to see on that front. Um, switching gears a little bit, I know you said you have a little bit of an IT background. You know, what interests you the most in that industry? And we'll kind of touch a little bit more on NIL as well as uh, what Web3 is, you know, going on as well. So I did, um, within IT, I did mostly like help desk things. Um, most people usually go to these classes where it's like A plus, sec plus security plus, like Cisco systems, stuff like that. I only went to um, A plus. So it's kind of like the borderline IT things. It's not really like fully IT, but what I did in the, in the military, like I said, I had soldiers. So it was basically like paperwork, like help desk paperwork. I wouldn't say it wasn't like deep into IT because I only got to the borderline like hardware, hardware software, stuff like that. Right. But when you get into like, um, workstations and, and things of that nature, that's kind of where I get lost because I didn't really learn as far as that. But they, they had classes available in order for you to learn that. But really, I just did help this, to be honest. But I yeah. do, like, all the things requiring help desk and stuff like that, like, it's like PowerPoint, Microsoft, I know how to work those. Yeah, that's awesome. And now, you know, seeing what technology has evolved, you know, definitely in this past couple of years, what are your initial thoughts so far on Web3 and how Burst is working to help, you know, young athletes like yourself, you know, monetize your NIL and connect more with your fans and gain that brand awareness? What, what are your initial thoughts so far on all that? I mean, I love it because it helps us and it helps the people. Like everybody watching, everybody, um, you know, bidding and, and things of that nature it's just like it helps everybody so I feel like I feel like it's great that's awesome and, and what about your your initial launch went well and any initial thoughts on on how those results turned out honestly I didn't I didn't really expect the way that it like the way that it turned out I didn't expect it to turn out that way because I would say that and I'm not like kind of like I'm not like degrading myself or anything like that, but I'm at a small school and I figure, you know, nobody really knows my name, but to, to get it out there like that and for that type of return to help everybody else, yeah, I feel like that's, that was crazy for me, but I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just the start, you know, as we're working to, to help more athletes like yourself and help you um, continue to monetize your, your NIL. What are your, what are your thoughts so far? You know, you've only been in one year at, at Weber and played one season. What about the NIL that, you know, got legitimized the summer of, uh, we're in 2023 now. So summer of 2021 when NIL got legitimately got passed, what are your thoughts um, on that happening and, and now allowing you being a student athlete to go and find different opportunities and all across various industries um, and, and to really just build a brand for yourself? I feel like um, as athletes and athletes coming from like low income areas, sometimes uh, the money for school doesn't cover everything like the cost and, and things of that nature. So I've always, I've always thought that an athlete should be paid in, in my opinion, because you know, we put so much on the line and, and things like that, but it's just like, you know, I, I, I never really knew until I got in college that, you know, sometimes all of your colleges are paid for. Like you only get like half a scholarship or preferred walk on and, and stuff like that. I didn't really know how much money was involved, but 
now for athletes to be paid for what they do and like for the image and stuff like that, I love it. It's great because yeah. it allows athletes that don't really have the the money and stuff like that to really venture out and kind of tap into newer things that they know how to do, like market themselves. Right. Right. And it, and it levels the playing field. Right. And, and so, you know, for a lot of athletes that maybe aren't at the, the big schools, you know, and they don't, maybe they don't have a big presence online, they have the power to do so now and actually, you know, get the help to create that brand and presence. Um, and they might not be the best player at their position, but they can still go in and get all these deals and really make a name for themselves because it's leveling that playing field now. Um, so we're definitely living in some exciting times set to have that uh, been passed. What, what do you, um, what do you look forward the most kind of like, even, you know, do you want to take your, your career to the next level after Weber? Do you want to, you know, what are your kind of long-term goals that you have for yourself? I want to take my career too, but I kind of think about things like one step at a time. So my thing is, um, I obviously know football doesn't last forever. I obviously know that, but one thing I really is really important to me is, you know, not just being cared for when you're when you're healthy and stuff like that. Because if you get injured or something like that, like if I get injured, then my career is over, you know. So my thing is I want to find a career first that I'm good at and then I could pursue, you know, playing at the next level. I obviously want to play at the next level, but I want to find a career first and then um, look for somewhere to play at the next level. Because that can that could always come for me, but my thing is, you know, I want to really focus on life after football, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. And what about, you know, if you were to look back and tell your younger self, um, you know, a couple things that, that you would do differently? Would there be anything in particular that you would you would change or, or do better that, you know, that athletes looking up to you or even just your fans looking up to you um, could take advice from? Um, I will probably just say time management. There was a lot of times where, you know, I could have done something and I didn't do it and it would have made me better would have excelled me in, in, in so many levels, but I didn't do it. So time management would be kind of like a major thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's everything. And just it doesn't matter if you're an athlete or non-athlete um, to, to be able to manage your time in anything you're doing in life is, is definitely critical. Uh, we'll, we'll wrap it here, Devante. And I appreciate you being on this episode. You know, now we're in 2023. What are three lessons that you would give uh, to our audience um, to help that would help them in anything they're trying to achieve in life. Three lessons that you really you live by um, and, and it can help can help people in our audience. Um, one would be believe what people say, not what they do. Um, your actions will take you far <clears throat> further than your words and do that get get comfortable get comfortable with being uncomfortable that's what i would say get comfortable with being uncomfortable i love it so just to recap that you said you know believe in what people say you know now what they do um actions will take you farther than words and then three to be comfortable being uncomfortable all great lessons that's awesome well, Devante, appreciate you being on the show. We're grateful to have you rocking with us into 2023, part of the Burst family. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being on the show. We appreciate it. All right.